Well, what is up everyone? Welcome back to our lawn. And today we're talking about a couple concepts that if you are new to shortcut turf, if you're following me and you're getting into a putting green at your house, or you're just starting to mow your lawn a little bit shorter, you might be getting into plant growth regulators, which is what we are due, actually overdue to apply today, and soluble fertilizers to get lower rates more evenly spread across an area. So we're starting with, I have, I bought, I think I've had this for like almost three years now, you use such a small amount that it's not going, it lasts forever. Uh, but it's a feed grade urea. I don't know if it's technically soluble, but it will dissolve. So I have in this bucket over here, some hot water from my tap inside that does help dissolve. I have 6,000 square feet. Urea is 0.46% nitrogen, nothing else. It's pure urea. So I want to go out with a quarter of a pound of urea per 1,000 square feet. So six, that's a pound and a half. So we need a pound and a half of this product measured out in here, and we're gonna get it dissolved in this bucket. Pretty good pour, actually. One and a half pounds urea into our hot water. We'll start mixing that. And while that just sits for a little bit, let me talk about why you're gonna to want to get into soluble fertilizers when you're dealing with shorter cut turf. And really it's it's a concept that's broadly known as spoon feeding, but really we just wanna apply lower rates of fertilizer and they're at rates that you can't do via granular and broadcast. So like there is no circumstance where you could spread evenly that you can make an effective application out of using a quarter of a pound of a granular fertilizer per 1000 square feet. But what we can do is dissolve that into solution and now we are applying it via water and that's touching every single grass blade and now we're able to apply evenly a very, very low rate of fertilizer. And the other thing we're doing today is again, a very old bottle of Trinex Pack Ethyl because when you're applying at just over an eighth of an ounce per thousand, a gallon, which is 128 ounces, goes a very, very long way. So I'm gonna actually throw on the microphone while I go apply and we'll talk to you about how you figure out and do the math of uh, knowing when and how to apply plant growth regulator. But today what we're doing is again, eighth of an ounce. One ounce is 29 milliliters. Uh, so we have an eighth of that is what, just under four? And we got 6,000 square feet. So I'm gonna actually go at, I've been doing five mil per thousand. And so I've been doing 30 milliliters across uh, the whole the whole thing. So I'm gonna get 15 mil into my other bucket, which has most of the water in it. And then once I get this fully dissolved, transfer half of this into that bucket, we'll get the other half into this one. That mixed. It's near it matters, half of the water in this bucket. This isn't an exact science, it's all going to the same place. So if it's perfectly half and half, it doesn't really matter. Close enough. So we'll get our other half of the T-Nex. For a second, forgot which bucket I applied that into. But actually first, before we do that, to avoid our foam, to avoid it getting all foamy, I'm gonna fill this bucket. And we mix for a minute, and I'll catch you all when we're spraying. All right, so hopefully you can hear me. So again, we have in the tank a quarter pound per 1,000 of urea and a little over five mil per 1,000 Trinex Pack Ethyl, which is a plant growth regulator. And you might say, Jason, you're spraying 6,000 square feet with a four gallon backpack sprayer. Yep, that's correct. So my walking pace, if I walk what feels pretty slow, this four gallon backpack will cover 6,000 square feet. Or if I walk a little bit slower, it'll cover 7,000 square feet. And so, because that's pretty low on carrier volume, and I don't necessarily trust my application to be perfect. Right now I am tracking with the first four gallons with the light stripe on my right. Again, I'm following my stripes from the mower. Light stripes on the right. I come back with the other, with the second four gallons and the dark stripe will be on my right so that I have shifted where I'm applying, just making sure that I have even coverage as best as I can. And so I have the correct amount of product for 6,000 square feet in this eight gallons of water. What I hadn't thought about as I talk is you're gonna hear me become increasingly winded because I'm not in very good shape. And so let's talk plant growth regulator. Cause like I said, this is probably a new concept to some of you if you're getting into a putting green and shortcut turf and, the, and how that all is managed and how that all works. So a plant growth regulator is a chemistry that through some manner of fashion is going to reduce how quickly the plant grows. My understanding of Trinex Pack Ethyl or Tnex is that it does that by shortening the uh, cell 
division. So basically as cells divide and grow, those cells aren't as big. So the leaf tissue doesn't grow as much. Again, I'm not a chemist. This isn't something I find overly interesting. So I haven't researched it. Just the best of the knowledge that I have. And it has a lot of benefits. As you can see, I'm back here in pretty dense shade. Plant growth regulator can reduce the needs for sunlight with these plants. Uh, it can help preserve carbohydrate storage. I'm not gonna pretend to know what that means or what, well, how it functions, but it's good. It can also help assisting in enhancing color and disease prevention. Now, plant growth regulator alone won't give you color and won't prevent disease, but it can help in the resistance of all those things. So now we have the product. How do we apply it? So the label is anywhere from, and it's grass type specific, and it has all this information on it, but it's based on the height of cut. And I believe that's because of how much leaf tissue there is to absorb the product. The less leaf tissue there is, the less we want to apply because less gets absorbed. Again, I don't know that for sure, but I believe that's the concept because the application rates get smaller, the shorter we cut grass. From as much as a half ounce on lawn height, uh, cool season grass, I can already tell I'm walking too fast, down to an eighth of an ounce on bent grass at putting green height down at an eighth of an inch. So like you heard me say in the intro, I am just over an eighth of an inch because again, I'm applying a little bit, about a thousand of the square feet are putting green, but the rest of it's fairway height up at three eighths. So I want to make sure I'm getting sufficient suppression on those as well. And so for my practice facility, and, I, and again, I've experimented with this for a long time, this, this application rate gets me quite a bit of suppression growth suppression, and I really don't have a ton in the way of discoloration. Something to be aware of with Teenex is you can uh, lose a little bit of color. It can kind of brown the leaf tissue a bit if you're on the higher rates. Very likely not going to kill it, but you can cause some damage. And I've also, while we're on the topic, I've also experimented with up to a half ounce per thousand on my Kentucky bluegrass in the front. I'm going to say if you're doing plant growth regulator on lawn height turf, let's stay around a third of an ounce or so. For measuring, uh, as you saw, if you have kids, I highly recommend that you use the uh, medicine, the little medicine measures that come with, come with medications, just because most measuring cups aren't gonna give you the kind of accuracy you need. And so then the next thing we have to talk about is application interval. How often do you apply these things? So this also changes. So the University of Wisconsin-Madison did a study on Green's height bent grass. For Green's height bent grass at that eighth of an ounce application rate, we are going to do every 200 growing degree days at a base of zero degrees Celsius. So I get that sounds complicated. I promise it's not because there is a website that does all this for you. I currently am probably somewhere in the 300 to 350 growing degree day window and I can tell because I am definitely seeing rebounds. So what happens with these plant growth regulators is it suppresses growth. Then as it comes out of regulation, it actually gets a surge of growth beyond what you would have otherwise experienced. And that's the rebound and then it settles back down to normal. So I'm currently in rebound. I'm about probably four or five days late. That's fine. It's a little bit of stress on the grass. You want to try to avoid that, but not the end of the day, not the end of the world if, if that's what happens to you. That reapplication interval, as I mentioned, for putting greens and what I try to stick to back here is I try to live in 200 to 250 growing degree days because peak rebound happens in about 360 days. However, that's not the whole story. If we are going higher mole height, so we start to get into the fairway or more significantly, we are doing it on a lawn like I have over there where we're cutting at two, two and a half, three inches that reapplication window and how long the suppression lasts actually extends quite a bit. And so this is something you'll actually need to experiment with and watch and keep an eye on to see like, okay, how much is my yard actually growing and what's going on with it? But it can be as much as 400 growing degree days if you're utilizing plant growth regulator on a longer cut cool season lawn. And so at the end of this video, I will speak to, I'll bring, I'll show you how I track this and how I measure growing degree days and keep track of all this myself. I promise you it's a lot simpler than maybe it sounds. But the last thing I want to say while I'm spraying is another beauty of, and if you get into spraying things onto your lawn is we can now combine things. So like I said, I have plant growth regulator and fertilizer in this backpack. That is something I recommend with TNX also that we get some sort of furt or some sort of iron because you can't get a little bit of discoloration. That furt's going to help combat that a little bit. But usually I am also applying my fungus Pesticides, any fertilizer I need, insecticides will go down with this. And that really is the beauty of spraying when you get into doing that is we can now cover all sorts of applications, all of that stuff mixed into a single backpack. So I'm gonna get my perimeter pass in here. That'll be it for the application kind of portion of this video. And then we're gonna come out of that and we will talk to you and I will walk you through how I how you can actually do this calculation to make sure that you're applying at the right time. Again, it's just a website. It's really easy to use. It is not difficult at all. We'll get you that example. 
and then we'll get you to the outro. So as promised, the last part of this video is talking about how to know when that growing degree day window has occurred. And I know I've said that phrase growing degree day or GDD a bunch of times in this video. It's just a measure of temperature ducks. And that is the measure of the average temperature between the high on a day and the low on a day minus a benchmark. So all the numbers I'm referencing are Celsius based. It is the average of the high temperature of the day in Celsius and the low temperature of the day in Celsius. So for easy math sake, if it was 20 and 10, we would take 15 and then our base is zero degrees Celsius. And so 15 minus zero, that hypothetical day had 15 growing degree days. And now you can track that if you wish to. I don't, it's entirely unnecessary because Syngenta and a number of other places, but I use Syngenta specifically, does all this for you. So what you're gonna do, you're gonna Google Syngenta growing degree days. You're going to go to that website. Then there are the options to enter your zip code. So you're gonna put in wherever it is that you live. Then it defaults to 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Those are not the units we're using. So click the drop downs, select Celsius, select zero degrees Celsius, and then you refresh the page and you're gonna get the last, I believe, 30 days and how many growing degree days there have been through the whole season. So from the beginning of the year until your current day, current or yesterday, I guess, until yesterday, it is going to give you the total of growing degree days for your area for the season. So what you're gonna do when you apply your plant growth regulator is you're gonna note what day it was. So I did an application on June 8th. And so we go there and there is a number there of total degree days for the season. So I'm going to note that number. And since again on the green, I'm going to add 200 to 250. If we're doing longer turf, that might be 350. It might be 400 that we're looking. So on that given day, there was that number of total growing degree days. I add 200 to that and I watch for that number to occur. So if we look forward in this particular instance, I believe it was 12 days later on the 20th that I hit a growing degree day for the season. That was 200 days higher than the day I applied. Day I applied plus a 200 growing degree day interval gives me that number that I'm looking for. When Syngenta says that there have been that many growing degree days in the season, that's when I'm in my application window again. And again, you don't have to panic. This doesn't have to be a precise science because again, we have until 360 days before we hit peak rebound. So that is everything I can think of to tell you about how to utilize, how to leverage, and how to benefit from plant growth regulator and how to use some of these liquid applications to be able to get more effective and more, let's say, efficient applications via liquids to shortcut turf, especially if you are somebody that's trying to maintain, trying to learn how to maintain a putting green. Hopefully that's helpful. Please let me know any questions you have in the comments. I reply to every comment, so put it down there. I'll answer your question as best as I can. If I don't have the answer, I will go find it for you. So if that's helpful, if you want to see other stuff that we're doing back here, bug. If you want to see other stuff we're doing back here in our lawn, the beginner lawn care program, just a general follow along to the stuff that I do here on my property, subscribe to the channel. If this was helpful to you, please like the video. Thank you all as always so much for watching. We'll see you next time.